Hi, in today's class we are going to discuss about the abdominal aorta as well as its branches. The abdominal aorta is the main blood vessel of the abdominal cavity that transmits the oxygenated blood from the thoracic cavity to the organs within the abdomen as well as to the lower limbs. For example, if you see the origin of the abdominal aorta, it arises anterior to the lower border of the T12 vertebra and it is the continuation of the descending thoracic aorta. So what is the course of this major blood vessel? This courses through the abdomen that is anterior to that of the vertebral bodies and ends at the level of the vertebra L4 where it is slightly to the left of the midline. And what about the terminal branches? The terminal branches of the abdominal aorta what you can see in this image are the two common iliac arteries. So this particular bifurcation of the abdominal aorta into two iliac arteries can be best visualized on the anterior abdominal wall as a point approximately 2.5 centimeters below the umbilicus or even with a line which is extending between the highest points of the iliac crest. As the abdominal aorta passes through the posterior abdominal region, as you can see in this picture, that the prevertebral plexus of nerves and ganglia covers its anterior aspect of the vessel. Now let us discuss about the various branches which are arising from the abdominal aorta. So here the first one is the celiac trunk which is called as the celiac artery. The celiac artery arises anterior to the upper border or we can say upper part of the vertebra L1. Whenever you see a question related to the origin of the celiac trunk, we need to select the option called as origin is anterior to the upper part of the vertebral body L1. Once the celiac artery arises as an anterior branch of the abdominal aorta, it immediately divides into three important branches called as left gastric, splenic and the common hepatic arteries. And another important branch is called as the superior mesenteric artery. So the celiac trunk or the celiac artery is also an anterior branch but it is not a paid branch that is the reason the celiac trunk is called as unpaid branch we can say. And the superior mesenteric artery is also unpaid branch which is arising from the anterior aspect of the abdominal aorta. It arises anterior to the lower part of the vertebra L1. So upper part of the vertebra L1 is related to the celiac trunk and lower part of the vertebra L1 is related to the superior mesenteric artery. And when we discuss about another important anterior branch over here is the inferior mesenteric artery. So if you see the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery, it is also an anterior branch where it arises from anterior to the body of the vertebrae L3. So remember that celiac trunk is related to the upper part of the vertebral body L1. Superior mesenteric artery is related to the lower part of the vertebral body L1 and inferior mesenteric artery is related to the vertebral body L3. So these are the important uh, branches, anterior branches we can see and there are like one paid branches we can see over here. One paid anterior branches are the gonadal arteries which are also called as testicular or ovarian arteries which arises between L2 as well as L3. So other paid branches are the middle adrenal arteries and the renal arteries. The renal arteries arising 
between the vertebra L1 as well as L2, gonadal arteries between L2 as well as L3, and the inferior phrenic arteries where you can see these arteries arising immediately after the origin of the abdominal iota, these are the inferior phrenic arteries and other paid arteries what we can see are the lumbar arteries, right, these are the paid arteries. So even though we have like uh, anatomically paid as well as unpaid branches of the abdominal iota, but for today's discussion we will discuss like visceral branches as well as other branches. So the visceral branches are either unpaid or paid vessels of the abdominal iota. So there are totally three unpaid vessels or we can say there are like three unpaid visceral branches that arise from the anterior surface of the abdominal iota. They are the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery as well as like uh, inferior mesenteric artery and other important branches. These are the anterior ones what we can see over here. So when we talk about the celiac trunk, remember that the celiac trunk as well as its branches supplies all the organs which are related to the abdominal foregut. So remember that celiac trunk supplies the abdominal foregut. So what are the structures or what are the organs which forms the foregut? The foregut begins within the abdominal part of the esophagus which means it begins at the level of where the abdominal part of the esophagus begins and ends just inferior to the major duodenal papilla that is the midway along the descending part of the duodenum. So at the level of abdominal part of the esophagus up to the level of uh, the major duodenal papilla which is located at the mid part of the second part of the duodenum all these structures forms the structures of the foregut. So these are the structures of the foregut which includes abdominal part of the esophagus, stomach, duodenum that is uh, superior to the major duodenal papilla, liver, pancreas, gallbladder and spleen also develops in relation to that of the foregut region. So all these structures are supplied by the branches of the celiac trunk. There is a reason one single statement we can say that the foregut is supplied by celiac trunk. After the celiac trunk the next one is called as the superior mesenteric artery. As we know that the celiac trunk supplies the foregut structures, the superior mesenteric artery supplies the abdominal midgut. So the midgut begins just inferior to the major duodenal papilla because up to the major duodenal papilla it is related to foregut. So below the major duodenal papilla now the midgut is the one which begins. So in the descending part of the duodenum from the major duodenal papilla and ends at the junction between the proximal two-third and distal one-third of the transverse colon and this is the area which forms the midgut. So what are the structures which include this midgut? It includes the duodenum that is inferior to the major duodenal papilla, the jejunum, ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon as well as the right two-thirds of the transverse colon are related to the midgut structures. So remember that the midgut is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery, celiac trunk supplies foregut, superior mesenteric artery supplies midgut. So next one is the an important branch which is called as inferior mesenteric artery. So this inferior mesenteric artery supplies all the parts of the abdominal hindgut. So this is what we need to know about uh, the branches, important branches which are arising from the abdominal iota which are unpaid branches. So what are the paid visceral branches of the abdominal iota? So the paid visceral branches include the middle suprarenal arteries. 
suprarenal arteries means these are the arteries which supply suprarenal gland that is adrenal gland so adrenal gland is totally supplied by three arteries superior suprarenal artery middle suprarenal artery as well as inferior suprarenal artery so superior suprarenal arteries are supplied by the inferior phrenic arteries middle suprarenal artery is a direct branch of abdominal aorta this is very important mcq point remember that the middle suprarenal artery which supplies the suprarenal gland is a direct branch of the abdominal aorta and these are the paid branches so these are not the anterior branches where you can see these branches are arising from lateral aspect of the abdominal aorta so there's a reason these arteries are small lateral branches of the abdominal aorta arising just above the renal arteries right that are the part of the multiple vascular supply to the suprarenal gland because as i already mentioned the suprarenal gland receives blood supply from three arteries from three different branches that is the superior suprarenal artery arising from the inferior phrenic artery the middle suprarenal artery is arising from the direct branch of the abdominal aorta and the inferior suprarenal artery is arising from the renal artery so that is the reason the three arteries arising from three different branches so this is about the middle suprarenal arteries after that another paid branches are the renal arteries so like middle suprarenal arteries renal arteries are also paid branches and these are the lateral branches so renal arteries are the lateral branches of the abdominal aorta that arise just inferior to the origin of the superior mesenteric artery what you can see over here and that is what is the level of the origin of these renal arteries we have to say that the renal arteries arise between the vertebrae l1 as well as l2 even though you can see very clearly in this image that the left supra left renal artery is at much higher level when compared to that of the right renal artery and these renal artery supplies the kidneys and the next one are the testicular or ovarian arteries these testicular and ovarian arteries are paid arteries but these are not lateral branches right because these are arising from anterior aspect of the abdominal aorta the testicular or ovarian arteries are the paid anterior branches of the abdominal aorta that arise below the origin of the renal arteries right below the origin of the renal arteries and passes downwards and laterally and the supplies the testes in males and ovaries in females and next we have to discuss about the posterior branches so what about the posterior branches of the abdominal aorta or the vessels supplies the diaphragm or the posterior body wall or maybe it also supplies the spinal cord so these posterior branches consist of the inferior phrenic arteries what you can see on the top and next are the lumbar arteries there are actually totally four pairs of lumbar arteries what we can see over here and another one is the important one is the median sacral artery so first let us discuss about the inferior phrenic arteries over here the inferior phrenic arteries arise immediately inferior to the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm either directly from the abdominal aorta as a common trunk from the abdominal aorta or from the base of the celiac trunk but more commonly it arises directly from abdominal aorta immediately after immediately after the aortic hiatus or immediately inferior to the aortic hiatus so whatever may be the origin they pass upwards right as you can see in the image they pass upwards to provide some arterial supply to the suprarenal gland and continue on to the inferior surface of the diaphragm so inferior phrenic arteries supplies important blood supply to the inferior surface of the diaphragm and it also gives off a branch called as superior suprarenal artery to supply the suprarenal gland and next about the lumbar arteries over here 
the lumbar arteries as I already mentioned that there are usually four pairs of lumbar arteries arising from the posterior surface of the abdominal iota especially to supply the posterior abdominal wall and also provides a segmental branches that supplies the spinal cord. And next one is about the median sacral artery. The median sacral artery is the final posterior branch of the abdominal iota. This particular artery, this vessel arises from the posterior surface of the abdominal iota just superior to the bifurcation and passes in an inferior direction first over the anterior surface of the lower lumbar vertebrae and then over the anterior surface of the sacrum and coccyx to supply those structures. So these are the various branches of the abdominal iota.